Uh, so this week I had time to think of how I'm going to proceed on this Jeep tub. And initially I thought I was going to do uh, the floorboards in at least the front area. But what I'm going to do is actually wait for that. Before I flip this over, I'm going to actually repair some of the uh, outer skin. Um, it was I got a lot of good advice from people. They private messaged me and uh, commented on my video. Uh, how they would proceed and a lot of good ideas and I really appreciate you guys. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually start working on this outer skin so we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, I just wanted to run, uh, show you what I got this week. I ended up getting a new welder. I got an upgrade, upgraded welder from my um, uh, Harbor Freight welder which was is really good and probably good for most people, um, most people, you know, their garages and stuff, it works really well. And I probably would continue to use it if it wasn't starting to screw up on me. Uh, so it was screwing up, so I decided, you know what, this would be the time to get a better welder. Um, I weld in the garage, the, uh, my son's weld in the garage, and we actually want to expand our welding knowledge. So I want to uh, actually start learning how to TIG weld, because I've never TIG weld before. And, um, and I just wanted to get an overall better welder, but I didn't want to spend uh, an obscene amount of money to get mu either multiple welders or um, really expensive uh, three process welders. So what I did was I went what I consider the middle of the road. Um, this welder was about $698. Um, and it's a multi-process welder, uh, so it's an arc welder, um, MIG welder, and also a TIG welder. Um, so it got really good reviews, so I'm going to give it a shot. And um, what I'll do is I'll be everybody's guinea pig that don't have, have one and thinking of upgrading. And I'll periodically give you um, a review of what I think of it. Um, but you know let's get to it guys we'll start working on this uh, this outer skin so this seems to be rotted right back to here and this is a bend in the body right here and i feel like it will be a good place to actually make a seam right here so what i'm going to do is cut it down here cut it across here and we'll just see this was an old repair uh we'll get rid of that and we'll cut away this area here and we'll see what we got. We'll cut back until we get to some solid metal. Um, so I'm just gonna lift this up, get it up off the ground. Kind of put it in a better working area. All right, that looks good. else when you do a um, restoration like this uh, you find out once you start stripping the um, the bondo back and everything that you'll find old repairs like when I started cleaning this up uh, I found out that this has actually two skins on it so what I'm gonna do now is actually strip that back and see how far back it goes That isn't too bad. Uh, I took that piece of metal off that was actually covering all of this here. Uh, it's a little rough at the top, but it's actually uh, pretty thick right here. I'd like to not get involved in this area around the gas fill. Uh, so what I'm going to do is try to make this one piece. It's going to go right across here, uh, beyond this rust mark here, beyond this hole, actually go up go over and actually come down and probably uh, um, encapsulate that uh, rod hole too. So this might be all in one uh, swoop right, right, right across here. Uh, so that isn't too bad. So I'm gonna cut that out now. And before I patch that, 
I'm going to actually rebuild this framework to meet this structure right here. All right, so I'm going to add on to this framework here. And how I'm going to get the measurement for this piece here is I'm going to go by this width here at the bottom. I'm going to overlay it onto this part here. And um, this goes actually at an angle like this. And this goes straight up. So to get this angle, what I'm going to do is hold this little uh, ruler here to the same contour as this and make a mark up here. And I'm going to do the same on this side and make a mark up here. So my measurement, this actually is supposed to rest right there. So I'm going to go this measurement to here. I might actually overlay this onto here too so I get a nice welding edge right across here. So I'm going to go from whatever this measurement is to here and allow for that width. So this width is going to be uh, wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. So I'll get that measurement now. So at the top, it's going to measure about five and a half. And at the bottom, it's going to measure about four and a half. So it makes an inch difference just on this one side here. This side goes up pretty straight. Uh, and this is going to be the only one that has an angle. So it's going to be five and a half by four and a half. And I'm going to have to go around this and the length is going to be about two and a half or about two and three quarters. Uninstalled. Uh, I'm going to actually weld it also from the other side when I flip this over. But now I'm ready. I have the, uh, now I'm ready to uh, replace this piece here. I have this all cleaned up, ready to receive um, this piece. Uh, what I like to do is when there's any curve in the body like this and it's in good shape, even if it's a sliver of metal like this, I like to keep that because I can bring the metal right up to that and weld right along there. It just saves a lot of bending and trying to get that to be perfect, that perfect roundness right there. Uh, for me being a, I want to say a novice at this, um, that stuff definitely helps me out quite a bit. So now I'm going to go cut that piece, piece cut, but I only have it cut roughly. I have uh, the overall dimension of it cut and I overshot the edges and I put a, a bend on the top where it's going to meet this framework. Uh, so now I'm going to go to the back side and I'm going to trace out the actual area that I have. Like I'm going to trace right here where it's going to meet up here on the inside where it steps up. I'm going to trace that out and then add a little bit to that measurement so it overlays the existing body. And on this side here, I'm gonna trace out on the inside the triangle and then trace out this uh, wheel well. So I got that piece cut and put in place. Uh, so now I already started welding, uh, welding it up, but to hold a piece like this in position, um, you can use vice grips and those work really well. But sometimes you're in an area that you can't reach with vice grips, or at least the ones that I have. Uh, so a friend of mine had told me about these things called Clicos and they're like temporary rivets that help hold the, um, the piece of metal in position. Uh, so I'll show you how we put those in. So first you start out and you drill a hole with an eighth inch bit, uh, pretty much so you go through both pieces of metal. You wanna be in an area that 
you're gonna go through this piece of metal and then into this back piece of metal. metal. Then there's a tool that comes with it that suppresses the Clico. So the Clico slides in here, then you squeeze this and it raises the rivet out of the, uh, the back holder. Then you put it into the hole and then you let go. And what it does is it acts as like an anchor and it squeezes together. And as it squeezes together, it, it pulls apart or makes the diameter bigger. So it's able to hold itself in the hole. Uh, they're really handy. They actually help hold all this in position. And Tobias, I promise I will get these back to you pretty soon. Thanks for letting me borrow. All right, guys. Well, you know what? Um, I'm actually going to stop welding right now because um, my, the, that welder is definitely giving me a hard time. And the welds are coming out really crappy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is during the week this week, I'm going to set up my other welder, um, and try to get familiar with that welder so I can start using it on this project. Uh, but let's take a look at that rear quarter and see, see if we can get some of that fabricated. So this is what this rear quarter looks like. Um, it was definitely rotted out right here. I guess I was told that they used to mount wood in this, this area right here to help support this area. And what it did is, I, cause I guess a lot of these rust out in the same way in the same place. Uh, so what happened is the wood would get wet and it would hold a lot of moisture. Um, so that would end up rotting out completely and, and pretty much first. Uh, but what I'm gonna do, you typically when I, um, when I do something like this, I usually cut it out and then um, fabricate the piece. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is actually form it around this. I'm gonna use it kind of like a buck and then get it all prepped up. And once I'm comfortable with the way that it is, cause it's gonna overlay on top of this anyway. So it isn't like I'm worried about it um, being larger than it's supposed to be. So what I'm going to do is overlay it on top of that, actually mount it, and when I'm happy with the position of it, then I'm going to cut all that out. So uh, let me get to it. All right, so I have a reference mark here that I'm going to go by. That's where I'm going to get my measurements from, uh, and I'm going to actually overhang, um, overhang this area to this point, and this is where I'm going to actually make uh, the welded connection. So now I have to actually get um, a measurement from this point over here around this curved area and over to this mark over here. So how do I do that? You know, with a, a regular tape, you know, it's, you can't get really an accurate measurement that way. So what I'm gonna do, use is this tape that they use actually for measuring fabric. And it makes a good measurement right around th this here. So I'm gonna cut a piece about 21 and three quarters, and then I'm gonna measure from this point down 11 and a half, and add a half an inch, because I'm gonna make a bend at the top to give it some strength along, the, along that edge. So 11 and a half by 21 and three quarters. All right, so I got this piece cut. Now I'm gonna put this in position here, line it up with the bottom mark, and fit it behind this uh, tailgate metal. Just tap it in a little bit. So I want this to go beyond this edge. Now I'm gonna just roll this right around and see if I can kind of get an impression of where this is gonna be.
from where to put the bend. Okay, so I know roughly where that's gonna be now. Now I'm going to mark the inside of this wheel well. Oh, let me, uh... got that curve shape in it and I have it in position what's good about the Clecos you know where you had the piece of metal like if you're gonna um, trace out like I'm gonna trace out on the back side the wheel well and so I'm gonna have a template um, where I want it to be so now the Clecos make sure that when I put it back that it holds that same exact shape that's existing there. All right, so I have this piece for the rear quarter and I, it's the shape of the wheel well in the bottom here. And what I wanna do is be able to bend this over about a half an inch and uh, bend this area here. If this is a straight piece of metal, it's easy. All you have to do is put it in the brake and bend it. But in this case, I don't have a tool that will make that bend. So what I'm gonna do is actually use pliers and actually just nibble away and just make little bends. Not all at once, just a little bit at a time. And work my way around and it'll give me a nice even bend that sh should look halfway decent. I made some relief cuts on this aggressive corner because I, I don't think I could make it bend that much. Um, so I'm gonna just make some relief cuts and then just weld them up after because they will overlap each other. A lot of times I like to show how really anybody can can do this stuff, like how you can just use basic tools and be able to uh, repair things. You might just have a rusted out part, part in your car and, and you just wanna try to make it work. And you might have this awkward bend like this here. And it's good to be able to know that you can actually do it instead of paying either an auto body place thousands of dollars or trying to buy all the tools that be can become very costly. That's what I'm actually realizing more and more as I do this, that you become more and more invested into this. But I don't mind, I like doing this as a hobby. I'm hoping I'll always be able to do this as a hobby. So you can already see it's starting to take shape. I'll work my way down here. Get caught up where you want to actually make pretty aggressive bends, but you got to kind of fight that urge because you'll start getting a lot of creases, and then you got to just fix all those creases. It's not the end of the world if you do it that way. 
so I'll, I'll bring you back when I'm done. Oh, too bad. Um, I'm not going to suck in the top. The top's kind of pushing out here uh, because the existing pod is still in there, and I don't want these two bends to conflict each other and stop bending out. Uh, so I just have the Clicos holding it for now. But yeah, I, I don't think that looks too bad. Um, they're, they're supposed to be a seam right here, but in the, um, in the thoughts of making this strong, I'm going to actually overlap this seam and not even worry about that. Um, I know that's not really a hundred percent the correct way to do it. Uh, but I think it's going to, it's going to do nothing but help this, this tub. Um, but yeah, that, that worked out really well. Uh, so next week, um, I'm going to work on this side. Um, this side is not nearly as bad. Uh, we'll pop this light out and patch around this area and we'll probably overlap this area too the same way just to make this nice and strong and get a piece behind here. This is really thick metal here. So I actually want to attach this uh, sheet metal to this um, heavier gauge steel here like I did on the other side. I kind of overlapped this here, went in there, now I'm going to weld right across here or right down there. Um, so next week hopefully I'll have my welder, my new welder up and going and we'll be able to finish welding this part up. Um, pretty good progress today. I uh, got the major parts of the uh, rust fixed. I, I want to say by next next week we'll have all the outer skin um, pretty much fixed because we have this spot here and we have one smaller spot right here. Hopefully it's just a small spot. Uh, that was a kind of a surprise on the other side where that was uh, old repair that we had to deal with there. So, uh, but that's going to be it for today guys. Um, have a good rest of your week and I will see you later.